today we are doing a challenge that is near and dear to my heart. It is called New Earth City. It's perfect for Earth Day, but truth be told, it's really fine any time of year. The premise of this challenge is that it's the year 2035 and Earth has run out of room. The students are being sent out as part of an exploratory crew looking for a new planet to inhabit when they come upon Planetopia, which is very Earth-like. In the same vein as our early explorers here, New World, New York, New Jersey, I call this New Earth City, but feel free to let your students name their cities whatever they like. So this challenge is actually adapted from one that I used as part of my master's degree program in design-based learning. Now I'm not gonna get into all of that right now, right here, but if you were interested in learning more about the Planetopia project, I will include a blog link in the description below, so check it out. Before I get ahead of myself, let's check out the materials in the STEM challenge cycle. This is the STEM challenge cycle you should follow for every challenge. I've defined each step in another video. I've added a pop-in card to that video here, as well as a link in the description. Now all your groups are going to need a parcel of land. The younger the students, the bigger that parcel should be. So you could use an entire piece of foam board. I usually buy one and cut it in half as I've done here. Older students can handle smaller parcels like 12 by 12 or 16 by 16. Of course, it doesn't need to be square. We've used a rectangle here and that worked just fine. As always, the more variety in materials, the more diverse the end result will be. I don't usually tell students ahead of time what we'll be building, but I let them know we are doing a STEM challenge this week. If you have any materials that you wouldn't mind donating that you do not expect to get back, bring them in. One more tip, if your students are old enough to safely operate glue guns, go ahead and bring them out for this challenge, it is quite helpful. Now for younger students, you don't even wanna mess with that. I just give them a full roll of masking tape and I don't limit how much they can use. You're gonna see as I start going through this challenge that you could easily devote an entire week to this, but I know that you might only wanna give it a day. So just pick and choose what you like based on the amount of time you wanna spend. For the criteria and constraints list, if you're short on time, you will give the list to the students. If you have a little bit more time to spare, have the students help you generate the list by asking them, what will you need on this new planet? You should start fielding suggestions like places to live, places to work, schools, water sources, places to generate electricity. Now this should only take a few moments, but whatever they don't give you that you wanted, you'll fill in the gaps. So maybe they didn't say waste management. You'll also fill in any other specifics that you'll know you wanna cover in your extension lessons. So maybe you know you're gonna be working on surface area. You don't want them to build everything as rectangular prisms because they won't get enough practice. So require cylinders and triangular prisms and whatever it is you need. For constraints, you can add in a few things like the waste management area must be smaller than the power generating area or the housing can be no more than one-fourth of the entire land parcel. One-fourth of the city must be devoted to parks and recreation. Sometimes I also like to throw in an obstacle. As you see here, we have a mountain in the center of the parcel because a constraint was that there is a two by three by six inch mountain in the middle of the parcel that they must build around. They can't knock it down. If you wanna add difficulty, get a little bit more specific with the relationship between the structures. You can really almost create a puzzle. Some examples are waste management cannot be adjacent to any water source, and it must also be at least six inches from any housing. The area where you grow food must be 30% larger than the area of housing. You can really go down everything on the criteria list, places to live, work, schools, whatever's on there, and assign a percentage or a fraction or a decimal. If your students are old enough to work with volume, you can even let them know that they need to provide housing for maybe a thousand people and one cubic centimeter is equivalent to five people or 25 people, choose a number. If you're gonna be getting that specific, you're probably gonna to wanna to give students a little bit of extra planning time. Ask them to think before they start building about how they can ensure that they devote the right amount of land to these different structures. To that end, it can be very helpful to provide students with scratch paper or butcher paper that's the size of the land parcel so they can sketch out ahead of time where they plan to put things before they start building. Now the way you measure results will really vary based on the criteria and constraints you set up at the beginning of the challenge. Groups should go through the list item by item and check off whether or not they have met each and every criterion and constraint. If you kept things simple, like the housing can be no more than one fourth of the land parcel, you can really eyeball this and tell that we've met that constraint. If you added a lot of specific relational criteria or constraints, you're gonna need to give them some extra time to do their calculations. Again, it's very helpful to have the butcher paper. You may wanna also provide graph paper, 
that they can overlay and estimate the surface area of the structure of each base. You may also want to give them some base 10 blocks to help them estimate volume of different structures. And you may even choose to provide calculators to help them get through the calculations in a timely manner. So what you see here is waste management, the mountain and parks and recreation, the town with shops and restaurants, housing, farming, water source, and energy. We've got solar panels, we've got some hydroelectric here, and we've got the power plant. The white and blue string represents the plumbing, and the black pipe cleaner represents power lines. And the transportation in New Earth City is like a subway system, or you have to walk. You can see the footprint of each of those structures other than the plumbing and the power lines has been laid out here. And that's gonna make it a lot easier to calculate whether or not I met my criterion constraints. Now this was actually laid out after the design and was used as a measurement activity that the group sort of divided and conquered. To extend on this challenge, have students do anything solar system or space exploration related. There are a lot of articles you can look up on Earth-sized planets that are in the Goldilocks zone. You can have students do close reads on those articles or do research. And what is a Goldilocks zone? Have them research and explain what the Goldilocks zone means. You can have students use their new Earth cities to do mapping activities, or measurement and geometry. Even if you didn't set up in the build for students to design housing for a certain population, you could, after the fact, have them figure out what is their population carrying capacity based on what they built and based on some scale that you give them. Again, one cubic centimeter is equivalent to 20 people. And once they've done that, you could let them know that word has gotten back to old earth, how awesome new earth city is, and there's an influx of 10,000 people coming that they need to provide housing for. If you wanna tie in some ELA, you can have students compare and contrast new earth city with their hometown. They could then use that to generate stories or journal entries about their new lives. Whew, that was a lot. You now have the basics to do new earth city in your class on your own, but as always, the resource is packed full of goodness for you, so take a second to check it out. This time-saving resource contains everything you need, including modifications for use with second through eighth graders. You'll still need to gather the simple materials, of course, but the rest is ready and waiting. You'll get a line next-gen science standards, links to my STEM Challenge how-to videos to help you get the most from each challenge, and the new Earth City materials list. In teacher tips, you'll find premise and setup, how to increase or decrease difficulty through the criteria and constraints list, measuring results, and cross-curricular extension suggestions. You'll find two levels of editable criteria and constraints list so you can tailor the challenge to your students. To measure and record design size details, there are three leveled versions. For student design analysis handouts, there are two versions, four-page expanded room for response for younger students and a two-page condensed space paper saver version. You'll also find a set of group discussion questions. In the extension handouts, you'll find measuring and classifying triangles practice, as well as math extension and process flow templates. This resource is available individually and as part of the discounted Mega STEM Challenge Bundle. Links can be found in the description below the video. I hope you and your students have a great time doing New Earth City. I'm gonna be back next week with the first of the summer STEM challenges, so make sure you're following or subscribed. Have a wonderful week. I will see you next time. <laughs>